Okay, next to present, it is my pleasure to welcome Mimi Lam, founder and CEO of Superette. Superette opened its doors in Ottawa in, in April 2019 and almost immediately caught headlines from major international and national media outlets. The store's innovative, vibrant design, unique approach to customer experience, and engagement with the local community has made it one of the most recognizable brands in Ontario. The company has three high-performing store locations in Ontario today, with additional locations planned in the near future. With that, I'd like to turn the call over to Mimi to tell us more about Superette and how you created such a unique and energetic brand. Mimi, please go ahead. Perfect. Awesome. Hi, thank you, Andrew, and thank you, Ashlan, for having me. Um, happy to be here and to share our story. I'm just gonna see how this presentation works. Um, great. So I'm sure you read all of this. Thank you. Um, so let's get into it. Welcome to Superette. Um, what's in a name? If you didn't know, um, Superette is defined traditionally as an alternative name for a compact supermarket, a corner store or a mini mart. It's often used in places around the world like New York and Newfoundland and New Zealand with a focus on building community and an emphasis on bringing a familiar approach to our brand, we created Superette to be your friendly neighborhood cannabis shop. So who are we? Superette is the retail brand that makes cannabis buying as enjoyable as consuming it. Retail experiences is the last place where consumers can truly connect with brands in a meaningful way. Retail experiences outside of cannabis are becoming more diverse and niche, but cannabis retail risks becoming a monoculture where it sometimes seems companies confuse the desires of government and investors with the desire of customers. This is our opportunity. We are the retail brand that treats cannabis the way customers do, recreationally. So the Superette brand represents a new era where cannabis is enjoyed like any other vice. So what sets us apart? First of all, we are building a retail experience, not a dispensary experience. Retail is the foundation of our company and where we immerse customers in our brand. This is where we create loyalty, gain data, and build resonance. Secondly, our brand. The emotional connection we have with our audience is what will matter, especially in a crowded space. Third, we aren't afraid to look at things through a different lens and take a fresh approach. We are different from the inside out and we push the boundaries of what is considered normal. And last but not least, our story is just beginning. I'm talking to you as the only private company on this event and with only three stores. And yet we are relevant enough to share this virtual stage with our public peers, some with over 70 stores across the country. We've been patient in building our foundation of strong operations and branding. 2021 will be our year to scale and to begin realizing our upside. First things first is our retail. Superette is best in retail. Our retail equation is made of numerous factors that span across real estate, um, our design aesthetic, our in-store experience, our product curation, community. Taking all these factors into account, we've seen outstanding economics from our stores. In our fiscal 2020, we saw over $6,500 sales per retail square foot. We have strong average basket size at over $65, and our retail gross margins at the retail level is 33% and growing. We see double digit EBITDA margins at the retail level and positive low single digits on a consolidated basis. The first step in our retail equation is a real estate philosophy. We are building an ecosystem of stores that make sense in a cohesive portfolio and bring something special to the neighborhood with every unit. It is important for us to secure locations, not only because there's an available space, but because we are building a portfolio that strategically places our brand in target markets. And these strong locations need to perform not just now, but in the long run. With the proven value that we bring to our spaces, we are currently the top candidate for high-end landlords. We will win in urban markets. And what makes our retail experience so special? I mean, first of all, our retail spaces are familiar. We grow up borrow graphical interior devices from accommodation of neighborhood staples, um, such as diners and your delis to bring a sense of familiarity and nostalgia. Comfortable and accessible, but also grand and exciting. We are thoughtful and we care about every single detail. 
detail in our spaces from how someone greets you at the door to them to bring a tactile experience in the cannabis buying environment. Our stores bring joy and we have fun with it. Uh, we treat every single moment as our opportunity to surprise and delight. We give our customers agency. We know that it is their customer journey within our stores and that, that is their personal journey with cannabis. We present them with endless possibility and allow room for true organic discovery. Inside our stores, like any other normal retailer, product curation is key. And this is a differentiator for Super App. For our cannabis products, we have an extensive offering and we use that to test and learn what resonates or not with our customers. Outside of cannabis, we carry our own branded goods and we are a curator of really interesting neat brands and products that we love. Um, our stores are, desired, are the desired spots for um, many lifestyle brands that have presence in and we're exclusive stockists of many brands to come. Our focus on non-cannabis goods has made us synonymous to be the one-stop shop for your daily and home rituals. And this pays off um, because non-cannabis goods are sold at a higher margin and they make an outsized portion of our business. With this foundation we have built and by iterating on different store formats and value propositions, we are going to be ramping up our growth quite significantly. Our current plan is to have a portfolio of 10 operating stores by the end of this year in 2021 and have 25 and over 25 stores by 2022. We're creating our experience to be bigger than Ontario and bigger than Canada. Something that is unique to Superat is our brand resonance and engagement. And this is something that sets us apart. It is incredible the amount of buzz we have generated so far. There are many times where people just assume that we're already a massive brand or that we come from a place like California. As a brand, sometimes it's not about what you say about yourself, but you know what others say about you. We've been featured by tier one North American media outlets, including Forbes, New York Times, and many others. We are the first cannabis retailer to be featured in Global Morning Mail. So to put that in a bit of context, we punched way above our weight in terms of our share of voice and brand sentiment. So based on 2020 data from a media platform called um, Meltwater, out of a select group of cannabis retail chains, our share of voice by reach, which is measured by media impressions across all platforms, matches that of large chains and outranks many other retail chains. Similarly, when looking at brand sentiment, which is measured by what is known as an M score, which is based on a combination of editorial mentions, reach, tonality, we set the top in that sentiment. This type of relative reach is incredible considering our peers are nationwide chains with dozens or more stores. Remember, we still have only three stores with two of them only opening within the last eight months. And so what? We have the most sought after retail concept in Canada. We've garnered the attention of international media. Um, we are the first retailer to win two Gold Clio awards in a row. Um, we won the second Gold Clio uh, at the end of 2020 last year in brand design. And Clio is often of any industry. And practically, this type of recognition is beneficial, for example, when talking to prospective landlords and securing top real estate. Not only that, but we have the most sought after lifestyle brand in cannabis. Our audience follows us closely, love whatever we put out into the world, and we have an overwhelming amount of inbounds for collabs, partnerships, requests to bring our brands to new markets and in new formats. Community is part of our brand DNA, and we know that we can make a difference. We have spent the last few years living our brand values on our sleeves, and we show up. We have made an active effort to support the neighborhoods we are in. Um, by partnering with local businesses in fun ways, like having a burger phone at our Summerhill store and a pizza phone um, at our Spadina stores, which is going straight through Rosedale Diner and big trouble in the Toronto community. We have taken a stance to do better for our community and our planet with the recycling initiatives and ongoing volunteer and donation efforts to groups like the Ottawa Food Bank and the Parkdale Food Bank. We also recognize our privilege in this industry. And we use our platform for social good and to be an ally for minority groups. So far, we have partnered when supported Cannabis Amnesty, Florida Coalition, and the Urban Alliance on Race Relations. Many more to come. 
So why does this all matter? How we show up in everything we do as a brand is important in the eyes of today's conscious consumers. It is especially crucial in the Canadian legal cannabis industry because it has been shown that brands are still not top of mind for consumers buying cannabis. In fact, in the most recent report from the Ontario Cannabis Store, brands rank only 13th in importance as an important attribute in the customer's buying decision. The emotional are opportunity in this space. So in an industry where people don't care for cannabis brands, they care about this. As a company, we always keep things fresh. From the inside out, we do things differently. We're a values-driven company that believes in the intersection of people, planet, and profit. We attract top talent and hold the, that hold the brand in their hearts and bring their passion and innovation into everything we do. In a consumption society, consumers are looking for brands they trust and share the same worldview, and we are here for that. In building out our brand ecosystem, we create experiences that inform, inspire, and entertain, entertain our audience, whether that be at, physically at our stores or digitally. In 2021, it is not enough as a retailer to just have a website. You need to take a immersive omni-channel approach that drives people from online to the store and back from the store to online. Bridging this physical and digital experience is as much as an art as it is a science. We bring fun and engaging virtual vibes and we have built an intuitive digital experience that mirrors the feel of our physical spaces. What we have done through our website, social media, and initiatives like Spotify playlists and Instagram live streams has tied together entertainment and commerce. This hits our top line via e-com sales, and it's always fun to see how far our demand is. So far, our product has reached all across North America and all the way to UK and Europe. Speaking about product, Superette is a brand beyond retail. We continue to launch highly coveted branded apparel and lifestyle goods, most of which we sell direct to consumer, but we have started playing around with wholesale given the demand. Every collection to date has been sold through and lifestyle and streetwear stores from all around the world have inquired to carry Superette branded products. Building on this, we were the first cannabis retailer to launch our own labeled cannabis products into the market last year. We're leveraging our learnings and expertise as a retailer to handpick our partners and offerings and build what we believe as a compelling cannabis product pipeline. This is add significant revenue potential with limited capital risk. We're building a portfolio of brands we believe people will crave with a focused portfolio of products, all of their own spin, of course. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing about what we've been building so far because it's just the beginning. Since the end of 2018, Super Inception on our first store in Ottawa in April 2019, we've had a proven track record of success. With every season and every regulatory change, we've been building momentum, growing organically, and catching the eyes of everyone around us. We continue to execute and gain momentum as an operator and as a brand. And this is just a bit of a timeline just to show just what we've done over the last two years. We are setting the stage to win in the recreational market. We have focused on quality over quantity, and we are here to own the emotional connection with our customers. This will become their backbone as we turn atten our attention now to speed and scale. Think of the impact that we've had with only three stores and limited capital. Now imagine how that expands with significant retail and product reach. Over the next 12 months, Super will be focused on opening the next wave of retail experiences, launch a new brand, commercialize a portfolio of cannabis goods, and continue to generate hype with our private label non-cannabis collections, a holistic experience. And to really lead this growth is not just myself, but I'm surrounded by a team of experts and a group of incredible human beings I call my family. We have a diverse talent pool and diverse set of expertise and a retail prowess comes from team members that not just worked at, but helped grow to establish retail brands like Lululemon, Burberry, Sage Wellness, Canada Goose. We also have um, great corporate governance with an independent board of directors. We are approaching our growth with a really clean capital structure. And this is something that I think makes us stand out as a company. We have raised minimal capital to date with the last financing round being over two years ago. 
our cap table is tight and our cap structure is very simple with no weird instruments or no debt. I believe that retail is a story of cannabis this year and beyond. I know that you and Echelon also share this belief, which is why we're all here today. So Super Ed is here and we are here to win. Thanks again for, for having me. Um, I hope that I've been able to share a bit of a glimpse as to how we're carving out our space in this industry. If you remember nothing else, remember that Superat is the cannabis brand that makes buying cannabis as enjoyable as consuming it. I hope you have a super day. Thank you so much, Mimi. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I'll just kick off the questions here. First up from me, um, I know you talked a little bit about your rollout plans for 2021. We would love some more details on that. Three stores open today. Uh, what could we look forward to in the next couple of months? Uh, what could we look forward to by the end of the year? And I believe I saw a map that did show some US opportunities there as well. Could you perhaps comment on that? Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Andrew. So this year is quite exciting from a retail growth perspective. We have um, a handful of locations that are ready to go. Um, we have spent the last year understanding the impact of things like COVID and understanding how to build delivery and a digital experience into the retail space. Our focus when it comes to retail growth is to ensure that we can scale effectively at a low cost while still taking a bespoke approach, and making sure that we can involve and enroll community along the way. So right now, in the, currently the growth contemplated for this year is still focused in Ontario, targeting key neighborhoods um, in key areas in specifically Ontario, focusing on urban markets and some other brand relevant municipalities. To your point about what you saw on the map, we are always assessing opportunities to bring the brand outside of Ontario, whether that be across the country to, um, you know, western part of Canada, Alberta, BC, or into places like the US. Um, this brand is truly built to be global, and the way we are scaling and preparing for that is based on the foundation on what we are doing right now in Ontario. It is important for us that we continue to grow organically because again, we know that customers are fickle and we know that it's going to be a crowded space no matter where we go. So we wanna make sure we're taking care of our own backyard and to be able to you know, tackle everything else um, with speed. And I just wanna to touch on really quickly in terms of the model of our growth. Currently right now, um, in, in case anyone wasn't sure, they are corporate owned stores. We have taken a corporate model. Um, we will not be looking to franchise um, right now, it's a critical stage in, in our brand story right now to allow any sort of, um, you know, other decision makers that could affect the growth of our brand. So at this point, all the growth will be organic and corporate, and then also looking at inorganic growth when entering other markets, if that is an option. Um, something unique to the Super Ad experience, I, I think, in the stores you have open today and the stores you hope to open in the future, has been the sense of local community and branding and the energy around your brand. You know, as you scale, as you expand your store network, how do you ensure that you protect uh, that and you don't dilute that unique brand experience that, that you currently have? Yeah, so our brand is, is definitely something we're really proud of. And it's something that continues to grow and be fluid and change. And so the importance of that is ensuring that you know, that brand is, that our brand is communicated across internally and externally. So everything our team members do is, you know, how the brand shows up in all aspects and facets of this company. So whether that be marketing or retail, all the way to the store expansion and the butt tenders that are in store, um, how we engage our community and ensure that we are the cornerstone of every neighborhood that we are in, how we look at partnering, collaborating, with the neighbors around us, how we engage the residents and the businesses around us. You know, those are all elements that are taken upon, not just at the corporate level, but at the retail level as well. And that is critical from an engagement standpoint and a customer standpoint, but you also see it in our design aesthetic. All of our retail stores are, um, you know, working with the existing infrastructure and the spaces that we enter into. So it's not the 100% same meal work package in and out. It's making sure that um, we are taking a, a tailored approach to each space and to work with 
um, the elements that are key to our brand and distinct and notable to our brand, and making sure it actually works in our community. You know, all those elements, you know, might be simple to think about, but actually is every detail along the way. And that holistic vibe is what we bring into the space. And that is going to keep us differentiated in the long term. Uh, that's excellent. Um, you know, we do have a number of investors in our audience. So we are getting some questions now. Uh, do you have any plans to list publicly? You know, if you're not planning to list publicly, how, how do you ensure that you have capital to, to meet your growth objectives? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's a question that I face all the time. So, you know, since up until now, we have never really looked into the, into the public markets only because as any startup, it's, it's a lot easier to be able to, to essentially do what we do um, without the pressures uh, of being public. It was also important to me that to make sure that if that is an option and what we are going to do, that we were at enough scale. And so 2021 is going to be the year that we start contemplating, um, you know, capital markets activities like that. So far, we have raised money in the private markets and really surrounded ourselves with, with supporters uh, of our brand and our company. And moving ahead, you know, we are still looking for that private capital support, but I wouldn't say, you know, going public is probably the question. Awesome. Um, an important uh, component to our uh, cannabis thesis on the Canadian cannabis retailers uh, is the unique position of the retailers to own the relationship with the consumer. Um, in your experience with Superette, have you seen any consumer preference towards the retail brand over product brands? Uh, do you see product brand loyalty emerging or does the retailer still have considerable influence to guiding uh, purchase decisions? And finally, what opportunities are there to monetize this? Yeah, for sure. Um, so retail is, in my, from my perspective, the best place to be in this space right now. Um, we are bridging the gap between what is being produced by licensed producers, the products and the brands to the customers themselves. That is a critical piece of the value chain and there, we have a lot of influence, to be honest. Everything from what is actually at the stores to ultimately what customers walk out of the store with. And so, you know, what we have seen is that product brands right now still have either limited to no resonance to definitely limited to no loyalty. And especially with new brands and new products coming out on a daily basis, it is really difficult for, for those brands to keep up. And we do see that. As a retailer, we have the unique position to be able to define what those preferences could look like. And what we've done along the way is to build that trust and that sense of community, such that Superad right now is not seen just as a retailer, but as a brand. People are willing to spend the money on buying our apparel. They are following what we do um, with virtual events and activations. And when we translate that into product, we see that as well. And we see that right now with non-cannabis goods, um, but hopefully very soon with cannabis goods. And when you take that holistic approach with our own branded goods within our own branded space, it's easy to jump to the conclusion as to how we can direct um, you know, those dollars. That's great color. Um, and when you're having those conversations you know, with, with your customers and, and gaining insights into, into their preferences and habits, you know, are you able to relay that back to the licensed producers? Are you able to work with licensed producers? Um, and are there any plans to develop your own private label products for your, for your store shelves? Yeah, uh, you know, we're, we have a really great relationship with uh, the licensed producers. It's important for that two-way communication to happen so that we can tell them what's working, what's not working, and they can in turn tell us, you know, what's coming down the pipe and what they're working on as well. Um, so it's really great to have that visibility and insight. When it comes to private label products, that is going to be a quite a big focus for us this year and moving ahead. Um, we are launching a suite of Superette branded products and we will be launching a new brand soon that is unrelated to our retail banner, um, just to target a different customer segment and to be able to take different approach to product formats and to have different partners. The great thing is that when talking to licensed producers, they recognize the value that we have built and the brand that we've built. So the inbounds for, for partnerships and the ability to collaborate is, is truly um, immense. And so that makes you know, our job kind of opposite 
you know, problem where we have potentially too many options on the table for private label partnership. So that is a good problem to have, I think. Thank you for that, Mimi. Uh, next question is, uh, we, we recently saw a Western Canadian uh, cannabis retailer announce that they're going to move towards a more value strategy. Um, you know, when, it, when you're looking at Superette, uh, how do you see yourself responding to that? Um, do you think that uh, there's a place for value and premium to co coexist? Uh, and how would you think of yourself on that scale? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I, I don't believe that cannabis should be viewed differently from you know, any other consumer good. There's a place for different uh, different types of strategies, all the way from value to super premium um, and super aspirational. And so, looking at a, at a strategy like that, I'm you know all I can say is is good for them if that's the approach that they take. It's disappointing to see that um, there is a sense of racing to the zero, the racing to the bottom. Um, we don't believe in that strategy um, as an operator. Um, margins are not great working with the government to begin with. So I think that's a risky approach. Um, secondly to that, that's not what we are. You know, we are here to provide a curated experience. And while we won't put ourselves at the high end of, of premium, the, the great thing about the Superette brand is because our brand aesthetic that we can really play into, you know, what is premium or what is more mass appeal depending on the store, depending on the market that we're in, um, and really what the specific value offering we want to bring at the store level, um, depending on the unit. Again, back to the portfolio approach, it would make sense for us to have potentially a more premium offering in one space, you know, in a few blocks over and have a more um, economical offering. You know, that allows us to have a lot of flexibility when looking at that. And I think as, he, as the time goes by and as more retailers come online, you will start seeing, well, what I hope to see is that um, these companies are taking a very tailored approach or else we're all, you know, pseudo variety stores at this point. That's great color. Um, and we're, I'll try to squeeze in one more question, you know, 30 seconds or less. What are you most excited for in 2021 with Superette? Um, and, and what should investors be looking out for? Yeah, for sure. Um, really excited for Ontario growth. Really excited for, you know, fingers crossed, a US partnership. Um, you know, the whole capital markets angle is something that we are monitoring very, very closely. So don't be surprised if you hear more from us and from SuperUt. Thank you very much, Mimi. We really appreciated having you today. Uh, the brand is doing amazing. Uh, we, we appreciate your insights on, on how you're able to do that and, and look forward to that expanding uh, across Ontario and, and beyond that in the near future. So thanks again for joining us today.